Hello there. Uh, today we are continuing the battles between the Gauls and uh, the Romans uh, that happened uh, 225 BC. You remember the last time we played the Battle of Clusium, the same year, and this is basically a, a direct continuation from from the uh, events uh, from from the last battle because. The Gauls won it, you remember that uh, they did that cunning uh, ambush. They got the Praetor's uh, army and made them retreat. But they couldn't really exploit the victory because there was a uh, consular army marching towards the site of the Battle of Clusium, uh, led by Papus. Uh, and um, the Gauls really didn't want to have that encounter with the full consular army right there. So they had a, uh, a war council and Anarostas here, one of the kings or war chiefs of the Gauls, um, he said that, or he proposed, uh, which was ac accepted, that the Gauls should now start retreating uh, northwards to, to get away with the loot. Well, there were some problems with that, of course, for the Gauls. First of all, they have a heavy burden of the, all the, the loot. I mean, many slow-moving wagons. Uh, they had lots of prisoners with them, you know, Etruscans they have captured, and probably uh, Latin and, 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 and Romans as well uh, from the battle. So that would be slaves, I guess. A lot of cattle, I mean, they, they were carrying their supply with them. So, a really slow moving and big bulk army here. So, they pretty much had to um, follow the road uh, to, to get these uh, wagons uh, rolling uh, in, a, in an acceptable pace. And therefore, they first had to, to move southwards before they turned west against the coast. Because the Clusium battle was uh, a bit inland in uh, Etruria. So they were now heading towards Telamon, uh, which was uh, at the coast of Etruria. And so the first stopped marching south. Uh, Amelius Papus, uh, consular army that were following here, uh, he, he joined up with the remnants of uh, the Praetor's army that fought the last battle. And they started to pursue in the heels of, of the Gauls and uh, speaking of heels by the way this man Concolitanus it said that his name <laughs> means uh, the one with big heels or something like that so that's a funny name um, that's the other war, war chief of the Gauls by the way anyway they were heading south with the Romans in their heels and they more or less harassed the uh, the, the rear of, of the uh, Gaulish uh, column there, but they really didn't, um, you know, provoke for a battle yet. They didn't want to have that because I think uh, Amelius Papus was uh, waiting for another army to, to join up here. And there was uh, uh, another army um, that could join up. First of all, there were lots of troops actually in Rome itself, and since these guys were heading southwards, uh, the Gauls, Maybe Amelius Papus thought that they could be trapped between uh, the army in Rome and his own army and they could fight a battle and crushing the, the Gauls. But anyway, they suddenly turned west and towards the coast and there they reached um, uh, the coast road, a uh, north-south uh, uh, heading uh, road there. I think it was called Via Aurelia or something like that. And, uh, and then they turned north um, and, well, it kind of slipped away there, but uh, Amelius Papus was still uh, following them, of course, very close by, harassing them, trying to, you know, make them to move slower than they already were. Now, there was another consular army. At this point, or at least earlier on, they were in Sardinia. And that's the other... Uh, guy we will see in this battle, Regulus, Atilius Regulus, and he was located with an 
another full consular army in, in Sardinia. Now, the question is why was he in Sardinia with a, with a full, full consular army? It said here in the historical note that they were quelling a rebellion there, but I read somewhere that there wasn't really that big um, rebellions in Sardinia at this time anymore. There had been some serious ones before and they had to be quelled with substantial force, but at this point of time uh, I have seen it argued that there were not really that many uh, people who could rebel anymore. I mean, uh, young men uh, willing and able to bear armor and arms because uh, they had been deported a lot from there and, and sold to slavery and stuff like that. So. Uh, the thing is, there is another uh, theory of why Regulus was with the consular army in Sardinia, and that was because they had these uh, offensive uh, tactics as well. Uh, I mean, the Romans were, you know, kind of fighting in a defensive battle here, you know, protecting Rome and, and their southern allies. But they also employed these uh, uh, offensive defense, if you want, if you could call it like that, I don't know, <laughs> but. Uh, so there is a uh, there is a chance that Regulus was actually in Sardinia, waiting for the right moment to sail up north and you know do an amphibious um, landing somewhere uh, in the in right in the in the lands of the Gauls actually, and you know start ravaging there. And uh, I think that's fully possible because if you think what happened. Uh, well, during the the later Hannibal's war, um, in when he crossed the Alps, you know, they were again fighting a defensive battle. But then they sent this army to to Spain to harass and attack there in kind of the Carthaginian homelands. They also, I think, had a, an army in Sicily by the by that time who were ready to sail to North Africa and attack there. But that army had to go back to Italy, I think, later on. But anyway, so they had these. You know, they put up an army or two to defend Rome, but then they also have a strike force that would attack the, their attacker's homeland. So maybe this is why Regulus was with an army there. And, in fact, he did leave uh, Sardinia, sailed northwards, north, northwards and uh, uh, disembarked in uh, close to Pisa, eh? today's Pisa, and... So, suddenly, the Gauls were kind of trapped. They have a, one consular army south of them, and one consular army north of them, as Regulus uh, managed to land his troops. Regulus got info about these uh, upcoming Gauls, and he thought, all right, here's a great opportunity to fight a battle and win some glory, and uh, get back the loot from, from uh, the Gauls. So... Uh, what happened then? Well, he started march southwards, and Papus really didn't know that Regulus was approaching, which is kind of strange. But he didn't really know that he he had managed to got on in um, on shore and were at advancing rapidly. I think also those guys were doing a really rapid force march here that, southwards because. At some point of time here, quite soon, Regulus' uh, army did uh, get their hands on some of the Gaulish scouts from the, their main army. So they kn knew by that that the army was near. So, uh, and they got some info from, from those scouts that they have uh, uh, imprisoned. And they knew about this battle that has happened previously in Clusium, they knew what happened after that, that the Gauls were now heading with a certain speed northwards uh, uh, via through uh, via, via Aurelia, and uh, he then made a decision to choose basically this place as the site of battle. Because the, the Via Aurelia uh, went Kind of around a mountain or a, or a or a hilly area here, so it would go like this something, and 
Redus realized that if he could get control of this hill here, then he would control the road and could pretty much stop the, the gold from using the road northwards, and then they were trapped. Also knowing that there was another Roman army coming from south. So, he really uh, stressed the, the importance of getting this hill, and he knew that the, may, the time was of, of uh, essence here, so he couldn't really rely on the infantry to, to reach here before the Gauls, so he sent forward the cavalry uh, himself included here, so they rushed and took control of, of these hills. Now, the Gauls were then approaching, seeing some horsemen up, up the, on the crest here, well, I think it was not just a few, and there were thousands of them, but uh, uh, they then decided, that, or they didn't know that there was a full consular army coming up, so they thought that it was actually Amelius Papus who has sent, sent his cavalry in some way around the flank here and occupied these heights uh, just to stop the Gauls and then attack from the south. So the Gauls thought that there were a much smaller force coming here. So they dispatched their cavalry and, and some chariots and light, actually quite a big bunch of light infantry, which is really not seen here, but um, very much of the light infantry to rush up here and gain, take back the control of that, of that hill. I mean, somewhere on that point, they should have seen uh, the signs of a full consular army coming. So, uh, there was heavy fighting going on here. Uh, Regulus himself fell in that uh, cavalry clash that happened up here. Um, because he did some brave charges against the more experienced Gallic uh, cavalry here. At the same time, Amelius Pappus was uh, uh, approaching. He, he did in the distance see and got reports on what's happening here on, the, on, on these uh, hilly, hilly slopes here. So he uh, immediately dispatched uh, his cavalry to aid in the fight here. So when they approached from the rear of the, of the Gauls, that really turned the tide on, on the Battle of the Hill here. So uh, because suddenly the Romans were getting fresh troops in and they had a big numerical advantage here now. Uh, the Gauls well, they realized that they had to face the both armies here now. So they uh, started to line up for battle, facing in two directions, and that's pretty much never a good idea. So they placed their wagons and, and chariots on the, on the flanks to anchor uh, the big line here. And then uh, they put the warriors in, in two lines, or back to back, basically. So we have the uh, Gasatai here. Uh, and uh, I think the Boyai was facing north uh, to, together with the Taurini. Uh, so they kind of divided their lines by, by tribe. So both armies now arrayed for battle. We're actually, this is three armies uh, arraying for battle here. Uh, with, the, with the Romans having a numerical advantage here, I think they were about this time some maybe 70,000 Romans and 50,000 Gauls. Uh, and uh, it started with a light infantry approaching. It said it was close to 15,000 light infantry, Velites and other lights advancing towards the line. And the Gesatae uh, warriors, they were fighting naked here and they were in the front ranks and only had a small shield. So they really took a hard beating from the Velites. The Romans had really prepared for this battle or this war actually against the Gauls with uh, creating l loads of ammunitions for, the, for these battles. So they could really bombard the, uh, the Gauls with javelins. So they took a heavy toll, started to retreat, or at least some retreat back to the main line. Others got enraged and kind of uh, uh, got berserk and just charge into the Roman lines just to get killed. So uh, that was not looking good for the for the Gauls at all here. Also from the north uh, they got the other line advancing and 
because even though Regulus has fallen, the officer was still committed to this battle. And there was a heavy fighting going on here, but eventually as the Romans won the Battle of the Hill, by the way, in the beginning of the battle, the, both armies just stared at this hill in Ave because they were all, all looking, how did that cavalry fight uh, end up here? And it was kind of important. So I was kind of staring up the hills and st looking at the battle before the real infantry clash started. Anyway, uh, so it's told there was a big roar of uh, the Gauls were chanting their war cries and, uh, you know, uh, bashing their shields uh, against their sh um, swords and all that. So the, as the Romans approached them, they were kind of scared of these guys. They were fierce warriors, or sometimes referred to as wild beasts or animals. So uh, the lions clashed in. These had a hard time. And what really broke the spine of the Gaul Gaulish army here was that the cavalry, the Roman cavalry, uh, got some time to rest, got some time to reform, and then charged down on the flank of the of the Gauls, and that broke them. So they were fleeing in all directions. Many were caught up and killed. Uh, I think Concolitanus, he got, uh, yeah, they they actually he 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 got to, to be a prisoner of the Rome. He probably went to. Uh, Romans uh, was displayed because there was a uh, a big display after this battle in Rome. That's for sure. And um, actually, Anerastus he he managed to escape with his chosen warriors here, uh, but he was so ashamed of this loss, uh, so he he took his life together with his sacred band, if you can call it like that, and. Uh, so the Romans were actually, Amelius Papus was uh, entitled this uh, uh, a, a triumph of this battle and I, I'm pretty sure Concretanus were showed off there as a, a trophy of the war. By the way, Regulus when he died in the beginning of the battle here, he the Gauls chopped off his head and they took their head down here to show the the war chiefs here that they got the consul's head and that probably boosted morale here a bit for in the beginning of the battle but anyway it didn't end too well for the Gauls so that's the history of this battle and um, I must say this is a really fascinating one and, a, and what a I mean imagine it what a big battle I mean we have uh, over 100,000 men here fielded in this battle, so that must have been a sight. Um, well, let's take a look at the War Council. Okay, so we have the Gallic army here led by the kings or war chiefs uh, Anerestus and Concolitanus. They are having a five command card hand. The Romans. Uh, with the two consuls, Attilius Regulus and Amelius Papus, they are having six command cards and they will move first. So, yeah, so you know, we will have two cards in slot A in, uh, on, the, on the card display here. And the battle will uh, go on till one side gets eight banners. And then we have, well, it looks like there are loads of special rules here but there's really not that much because these are uh, these can these are kind of describing how we should handle that hill and this can be really boiled down to, to some easy uh, statements more or less you need to have the majority of that hill and if you do that on your player turn that is or any player turn actually then you immediately get two victory banners. If there are, if you are uh, having, uh, if both sides have um, an even amount of troops or control even uh, amount of hexes here, uh, or none, as in the beginning of the scenario is uh, occupied, then none uh, get any any of these uh, banners. So you need basically to have more than your enemy, then you get two banners at the start of any player turn. Uh, then 
we have this uh, river here, which is really not a river. This is the uh, Mediterranean Sea shore uh, showing there. So, as you can see in the setup here on the on the map, I have put the ocean hexes there instead of shore hexes. So, uh, here's the Mediterranean Ocean, and here we have that important hill that will be fought over. So, about that, let's check out the. Uh, the forces here, and uh, well, who should we go with first? Well, let's take uh, the Romans this time, and we can start down here. So we have uh, Amelius Pappus army here, and we have a left flank with three units of auxilia. So that will be some probably Etruscans and uh, Sabines and other. Um, probably mob some remnants also from the uh, Praetor's army from the from the Clusium battle. Then we have two units of medium heavy infantry, so that will be the legionaries, and we have also some triarii with Amelius Pappus himself here uh, up front, some velites as they should be. Here we have the the cavalry force that went after the Gauls up on the hills and uh, relieved the regular uh, cavalry there. Uh, so that consists of two medium heavy uh, cavalry that would be I guess mostly Roman allied cavalry but also some Roman. Uh, and here's a nameless reader by the, late, by the way. And here we have some more uh, velites. And regular army, that's the more stronger one I'd say, basically because they have more medium heavies, but really if you check the strength, they, they are quite even. It's just another uh, setup. They have more auxilia over here instead. Uh, but anyway, let's check, a, check it out. So we have two units of uh, medium heavies, that will be Hastati and Pink Base, another one there by the way, and in between them the, we have some triarii's. And then we have uh, some auxilia up there and Velites. And Regulus himself is with his cavalry force uh, that, were, that will be contesting these hills. So we have two medium heavy cavalry here as well, just like down here. So we have a group of uh, a cavalry and light infantry and the same, same there. Also up front here on the Roman right uh, or Regulus right. Uh, we have another unit of Velites. Um, so, pretty solid. Uh, all in all, we have five medium heavies and two heavies, so that's pretty, a pretty solid army. Okay, they are split up, so they can be a bit difficult to order uh, together, but on the other hand, you know, if you order like four units in the center, you could take two from here and two from there and press in. So, you have some possibilities with, as a Roman player, for sure here. But let's uh, check the, the goals. So we have some auxilia, we have two units of warriors here, together with uh, Anerestus here. Uh, then in the, before we continue the infantry line, we have a medium heavy cavalry, and more warriors, more auxilia, and another uh, cavalry. So this could also be dispatched towards the, the, the hills here if wanted. Uh, facing Regulus army we have two uh, light infantry on the front here and facing Pappus army or Amelius army we have three units so it's a light, an auxilia and some warriors and I guess these guys are those uh, that got the first hit from the, the Velites that were that Polybius was, was speaking of uh, a naked one with small shields, so they couldn't really protect themselves that well towards the, I mean, the real shower of uh, uh, javelins that should have been thrown here, I guess. Uh, then we have the cavalry task force here, uh, and that's actually Completanus who is leading that. So we have one medium heavy and two of these uh, uh, well, barbarian uh, light chariot. So we have the Barbarian Light Chariot rules in effect here, meaning those guys cannot do any rage combat. 
and they have these special, you know, three uh, dice as long as they have full strength, and they can ignore one flag as long as they are in full strength. And also worth to note again, those uh, chariots are actually three block units and not two as heavy chariots usually are. So by that I think we are almost ready to start the battle. We just um, we could just mention a few words of what we are up to here. And if you start this time with the Gauls, then well, of course we should try to prevent the Romans from getting that hill uh, into their possession. So it will be hard. It will be really, really hard. But to do that, I think we could actually, if possible, start moving our army towards that direction. So my thought is maybe we should try to ignore uh, Amelius Papalus' army as much as possible here. Just to try to keep the distance from them and move the whole Gaulish army to try to break through our regulus army i mean we are on our way north that's the direction of north by the way so we are heading that way anyway with the army and the loot so um by that i think we should attack that army and we should in the same way we could also uh pour up some troops in the in the in the battle of the hill here so that's a really basic plan. I just want to close in, do any skirmish attacks in the beginning as we as we go and then charge in with our warriors. Um, and if we are really lucky we could maybe even get control of that hill and then get the two banners from there as well and, and eventually win by that. Um, it's not an easy task to pull through but at least we should, as the Gauls, I guess, concentrate on one of the consular armies here, not try to dispatch some forces here and some forces there. We could stay with some forces here just to delay the Romans a bit, but the bulk of the force should move northwards. That's my plan anyway. Um, let's see how it pulls through. And then we have the Romans. Uh, pretty simple. We need to get that heal. Let's try to mimic the history meaning we go up with the cavalry. I know the cavalry is not really the most efficient part to fight in the hills. They have, you know, only two dice there in attacks and defense also. But uh, those guys are the fastest who could reach the uh, um, the hexes and could spread out more and, you know. So we're going to do that. We're going to send those cavalry up there and maybe that light infantry as well. Uh, even though I want to throw some javelins over here at least, but let's see. And then basically for the main armies, uh, just pull in and let's see who's going to be the hammer and who's going to be the anvil. But uh, both armies will close in and attack them from all sides. Um, the thing is, the Gauls will retreat northward. So these guys should perhaps be the anvil. They They want to uh stop the uh goals from retreating if we can close the retreat path and hit hard from here they will have no retreat path and they will start dying in when they're getting flags so that will be a nice thing but that's uh uh also going the other way because the goals can if they move northwards as is their plan they can hinder the romans from retreating for even regulus army must retreat towards this edge of the battlefield and that's interesting so if the Gauls could spread out and attack then these guys will have problems with retreating so it goes both ways actually the the retreat problems here so uh, let's see how that goes but by that uh, let's start the game so we had the Roman come uh, going first and we're gonna see in there slot A and B of course First of all, um, so there's the medium troops. We have an inspired left leadership, uh, and then we have uh, double time. Now we need to remember that 
This is the Roman side, even though we have Romans over there as well. So this is the left-hand side. So if we'll play the inspired left leadership, then it's this guy. There's no leader over there. So, uh, well, we have a few nice ones. Um, well, double time needed. This is quite a good starting hand. So let's see what we get to play. Okay, it's a C, D, or E, so it's none of these cards. It's fine. So we're gonna actually reveal all the Roman cards for now. It's two left, two, uh, three right. Yeah, three left, two left, or medium troops. Not bad, not bad. And I think. Should we maybe even attack with the cavalry? If we play the medium troops, we could start moving up. I mean, we have six units we could order. I think we're gonna do that. Uh, this can be really, really great, actually. Um, Cause I also want to start moving up uh, um, uh, Papa's uh, forces here. So, and we have another blue card there. So there, we can do a lot of cavalry actions. So we can we can attack those uh, barbarian cavalry before they even uh, can react. Actually, that's really good. Yeah, let's do that. So uh, medium troops it is. And that's going to be one, two, three, three, and four. And then we start moving up Amelius, Papa's uh, legionaries here. So those guys pretty much start marching like that. And uh, now for the cavalry, who should we hit? They are a pretty good formation there because those guys and those guys have these inherent uh, um, you know flag one flag immunity because they are full strength barbarians those guys don't have that but they have a leader so that's one and then all these guys are supported so uh, all of these can actually take two flags so there's gonna be some battle back happening here um, and they're gonna retreat towards there, so we could, you know, block some retreat paths. But since they can ignore two flags, I don't have any high hopes of really, you know, eliminating them. So what I'm gonna do, or actually make, make, making them retreat to eliminate, that's what I meant. But I want to just get loads of hits into these guys. So, my plan is, I take Regulus. One, two, three, we right over here, a dangerous position, I know, but we're gonna do that. Then we have these guys, one, two, three, they're right here. All these want to have, uh, you know, support from Regulus. Um, over here, hmm, let's make it like this then, one, two, three, and one, two, three. That's gonna be a really hard, and heavy cavalry clash going on here. Now, um, since I know I, as a Roman, need to retreat to this side, those guys have not a very nice position right now. So I'm gonna actually, I don't really know. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Who should we attack first? That's what I'm thinking of here. Maybe we should start from down here where we have some retreat paths. So let's start here. It's three dice and we enjoy the leadership supporter. Come on. So that was actually two hits because those guys are counted as light and the flag which they can of course ignore. So two blocks down here. That's what that was a good hit from the Roman cavalry there. They gonna battle back though, and they will get the three dice because they were full strength when this battle round began. And well, I think those guys hit with the sword symbols. 
even though they are light. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it would say no sword hit, sword hits here. So they hit actually with swords. So this is a pretty. I mean, those guys will actually eliminate those uh, Roman cavalry because we got two hits and a flag. So two hits first of all. And then the, these guys need to go back three hexes. One, two, three, and they are out of the board. So this is this is bloody from the very beginning. So the Gauls get their first banner. My oh my. But I'm sure we're gonna see some uh, revenge of that because now these guys will attack that weakened uh, uh, light chariot there. And from now on, these guys can only battle with two dice. But we, we need one hit to be successful. We actually got uh, two of them, so that's fine. So we, we got those. And by that, we got the first Roman banner, so it's one to one now. And we can now, right in here, go one more and attack again. But you know what, I will stay here and I will attack the second chariot there. Three dice. So, that's two hits on those guys. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, they can ignore one sword hit. Okay, so that was also true for the last battle, but... Uh, uh, I know we rolled enough hits any, anyway from the two attacks to elim eliminate those, so no error there. But we need to actually remove that one. So it's only one hit on those chariots. Um, that's true. So now um, they will not battle back with three dice. We have a leader with us now, so we can ignore one, one of those, but you know what? Ah, uh, they got three hits on these Roman Cavalry. Wow. So the Roman Cavalry goes down, actually. I mean, that was tremendous. And another uh, victory banner here. And we're also going to check if um, that Cavalry leader is, did survive, actually. Wow. Well, he did. So now he needs to go back... Uh, a few hexes, let's put him back here. Those guys can actually move. Those are dangerous, they can go three hexes, so they could actually go back, uh, go down here and attack me. Oh man, this is that was not expected, but the battle is still not over, so we still have a good chance to mm, get those guys. Perhaps, let's see. So we're gonna continue from here. I don't want to take that guy yet because they are trapped uh, retreat-wise. So we're gonna attack that unit with the second, uh, or actually the Re Regulus uh, uh, cavalry, and this is Regulus himself coming. And that's one hit. No, it yeah, one hit. These are medium heavies, and then the flag. So one of the mediums go down. The flag they can ignore because they have the leader with them. But we're gonna check... Oh, maybe maybe not, because we need to check the leader. And guess what? Conclinatus... Conclitanus is uh, a casualty already here in the battle. So this is going kind of opposite as in the history. Regulus uh, fell in these uh, hard uh, cavalry battles here. But now it's the Gaul who bites the grass and... Well, this means those guys need to retreat, but first of all, we're gonna get the Roman victory banner for the leader loss, and it's two to two here, so that's interesting. So these guys need now to retreat uh, to the top uh, edge, and that's that would be three hexes. Uh, one, two, let's go here towards the side. I don't want to be near those Roman uh, main line, the main line there. So these guys will now go in. Too bad these guys don't have any target now. But we're gonna go in there and attack that chariot now. Oh, we need to get that now, come on. Uh, 
and that would be one hit and the flag. So one hit, then these guys need to retreat how many hexes? Three hexes. Oh my, one, two, three. They go up there then. And we could still momentum advance into there, but we will not do that. We'll keep our we keep ourselves here. Uh, or maybe we should giving these guys two options to retreat. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that was kind of... Uh, I'm a bit uh, frustrated that these guys didn't get any target. I was hoping to... You know, my plan was with uh, Regulus to uh, you know, get some guys here, then go back and attack those guys actually. And then I could finish the job with these guys uh, and continue. But um, that did not happen this time. So, but on the other hand, kind of historical, it's a very heavy cavalry battle going on over here. Um, so let's discard that and give the Romans another a card in slot E. Like that. Cool, that was a cool first uh, activation. And now since we begin another activation, we can see that the Gauls actually occupy the hill. They have more troops than the, the uh, opponent uh, up in the hills, so they get two banners. So they actually now have four of the eight needed. Wow. All right. And now it's the Gauls' turn. So we're gonna first of all check what they have in slot A and B. That's the first Reich. Okay, so let's put it here and directly give them another card clash of shields or a uh, leadership any section okay let's see what we get okay that's a uh, c uh, or lowest order count um let me put some papers here so i remember those results uh c or order uh, lowest order count so since we don't have any a uh, card open in C. I believe we can face it up. Yes, we can. Let's see. Two units center, or because that is not a section card, so it needs to be a leadership any section. So two units center or leadership any section. Hmm. One leader is down, so we only have uh, one more. Uh, so it's Anurustus or or two units center. Well, by the two units center, we could we could try something against that Roman cavalry. Hmm. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should take an opportunity to attack these guys now, since we can make ourselves blocking their retreat path. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna play slot C, two cards center. Uh, totally two unit center, and it will be um, these two guys. So the cavalry moves here, and the warriors uh, they will move here. They can go to an attack. So I'm pretty certain we're gonna get that cavalry now. I mean, if we just roll one flag, we get those guys, and we will start with the. Uh, warrior infantry and that will give me uh, four dice in the attack no leader uh, support though and here's the needed flag so those guys just goes down because they don't have any retreat path and they are kind of blocked there so the goals get their fifth banner these guys could momentum and go in again. I think we're gonna do that actually. We're gonna go in, go in there. Uh, and then we have. I'm gonna attack with the cavalry as well. Uh, against. Yeah, Regulus. That's Regulus. And we got one hit on the cavalry. So we're gonna check the state of Regulus. Oh, I was close to being a casualty there. 
Uh, and now they will retaliate. And look at that. Three hits. Bang. That barbarian cavalry goes down, giving the Romans the third banner. This is a quick one. The banners are counting up really, really fast here. Um, so that's basically it. So the situation is 5-3 now. They got, those guys have 5 thanks to holding that uh, mountain or uh, hill, hilly terrain there. Uh, okay, so we're gonna give, uh, give um, the goals another uh, card. And then we go to the Romans. We gotta remember that card. Uh, I'm gonna just put it here in my... So it's just in my face here. Okay, let's see, the Romans. That's also a C or lowest order count. So C would be two units left over here. Or let's see what we have. Mediums uh, or inspired left. That would be one, two, three, four units. That would be, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six units. And uh, that would be uh, three units. So it's either I need to play one of these two. So we're gonna we need to activate on our left hand side basically now. So it's gonna be two or three units left. And I think we had a good chance to crush those uh, that auxiliary there. Uh, so I'm gonna play actually three units left. That will be those guys. I will start going up to Triarii and I will also go in here and do some battle. So we go here, we go here giving those guys the leadership they need. Those guys come up to battle and then we go in here as well. So those guys will also battle. All right. Okay, we have an, a bit stronger against those lights, but they are, on the other hand, adjacent to uh, the chief there, so mm, that could be a dangerous battle there, but I'm gonna do it anyway, and let's start there. Uh, so, the auxiliary will have three, so now we're gonna... Ah, actually, since I had the first strike, I'm gonna see who I attack first. Those or those, because then I'm gonna roll for the first strike for the... Uh, goals. So one, two, three, or four, five, six. Let's see which, which attacks uh, goes first. Okay, so it's this one against the lights. So if we roll something that uh, uh, affects the um, auxiliary there, we're gonna play it. And that's a blue, so that would not affect the auxiliary, so we will not play the first strike now. Uh, so those guys can go ahead and attack. And no leadership support, so that's one hit on the lights. And by the way, as you saw, they cannot uh, they cannot evade because they are blocked. Uh, that's why I'm standing there and fighting with the lights. So they're gonna strike back now, and they also managed to get one hit on the auxiliary. So kind of a light engagement coming on here on the on this side. Okay, next. Uh, place. Let's see if that auxiliary will play the first strike or not. I'm gonna roll a die. And that's a miss on those guys, so they will not play it actually. So gonna, uh, they're gonna hold on to this card for some more. So now the Hastati will go in here uh, with four dice. And that gives me three hits. Because I'm adjacent to leader. It's a big hit against those guys, but they will now retaliate because they are standing the ground. Three dice, no leader. But they managed to get one hit on the Hastati though. So good fighting going on here. Uh, and that's it for this activation actually. So so the goals are still holding on to the first strike, waiting for a better opportunity to use it. We should really get that leader into play 
uh, later on as the Roman, but that was not possible right now. Uh, so it's the Gauls again. Okay, A or B? Clash of Shields or Leadership Any Section? Uh, well, you remember my first plan. I don't want really to attack these guys, but you know what? I'm three. I am three banners from victory right now, because I'm still holding on to that. It's really important now for for uh, Romans to get back on that hill because it's not good that the Gauls had a two banner bonus over there. Uh, so we need to get something over there, but we are really beaten here with our cavalry. That's the bad thing. But we can get some lights up on the hill uh, pretty pretty quickly, so we really need to do something here. Uh, but anyway, back to the goal turn. So they would need... I mean, if they could manage to get three banners from this turn, they win the, the whole game. That's the crazy thing here, just because they're holding... Uh, that mountain with that chariot over there. So could it be possible to do that then? Well, Clash of Shields. We could attack pretty heavy here and here, but that could uh, not give us... Let's see, what happens? Can we... Uh, okay, momentum advance is possible, but we still cannot do any momentum battle with these units. So... If we play leadership any section, uh, that would be Anarestus and he and let's see uh, three other units. So that's pretty awesome actually. We could get the warriors, we could get these guys and even more warriors into the fight. And maybe we should attack Pappus instead. Uh, I mean, things are looking a bit better here now, and we kind of are in somewhat control over here, so should we take our chances to to win the battle by that card now? If we fail, we are in an exposed uh, uh, situation here against... Uh, so they could retaliate pretty hard, but uh, we are certainly putting pressure on the Romans, so I'm gonna do that. Let's play the... Um, Leadership in the sections, that will be one, and then three linked units. One, two, and three. We're gonna go all in with the warriors now. So, Anarostas himself will go here. These guys will go... Um, let's go here. Uh, let's see. What should we do with the cavalry? Mm. Let's place these guys here. The cavalry. One, two, three, perhaps. And then Anderstas himself will go just in here. Okay. Uh, I'm not happy with not having any leadership support here. Hmm. But we need to hit so many units, so I need to do it like this. So we start over here, and then those are gonna attack the auxilia there that went forward. So that's four dice because we're in full strength. Remember, we still have these, these cards, so we dare to do some bold movements here now. Uh, so let's see how the warriors fight here. Uh, not good at all, actually. They only managed to get one hit, so already now it looks bad with the with the plan of winning the battle with within this turn. Uh, bad roll, and those guys will of course retaliate with three dice, and they got in one hit and a flag. But the flag we can actually ignore because we are supported with that warrior unit. So that was pretty much an, just an exchange happening there. Um, not super cool. We could finish them off with Anerostas, but if we go here, we don't have anything else to battle against. So I'm not sure I want to do that. Uh, let's move the, move the focus over here for a while. 
and I will now let's see if we can get that unsupported guy to retreat and, and have some losses uh, so I'm gonna attack with the cavalry actually it's three dice against a Hastati there or Prinky Pace and we missed them completely what a bad roll uh, this assault is going really bad for the golds now um, so the Pinky Pace there will now retaliate and what a retaliation one hit and two flags so they are really bouncing back so one hit on the cavalry first of all and then two flags which we need to take so that's six hexes backwards one two three four five six <laughs> I managed to go to the baseline over there uh, crazy really crazy they are kind of fleeing from this battle but running just into Regulus Forster amazing okay so things look um, pretty bad so I think I'm gonna go with a bit more safer bets now uh, these guys will attack that Hastati unit over there so that's uh, four dice let's see what we can get uh, man we are rolling so bad now uh, not a single hit so because those are supported so they, they can ignore that flag as well so now they will retaliate against the warriors oh my and they managed to get three hits on the warriors so the assault is going even more bad than before now uh, so Anderustus needs to bring back some glory to the golds here now uh, so he has his picked warriors around him here and he will choose his target and let's see why where does he go um, that's a safer attack I believe yeah let's let's take those guys let's see if we can just get at least one banner so so we win some glory this turn as well uh, we need two hits and we got that we got three actually so these guys go down eventually and by that we got the sixth banner for these guys too bad we need to go in here and have no momentum combat to do sucks a bit but well well this assault was a kind of a disaster that happens uh, that's not the first time that happens right so yeah let's replace the card in slot B over there and then head over to the Romans okay it's a CD or E card so two left then we could do something here uh, we have a line command yeah and what else two units right okay the thing is these two important things I want to take care of with the Romans one is to contest that hill and that we can do with the two units right on the other hand I have some nice ripe units to pluck here but if we ignore that then it's the goals go again and they could with a good card finish it this battle because they still will do, hold that hill so I think I need to neutralize that two banner head start they got with a with a hill control so uh, I'm pretty sure I need to play the two units right this turn even though I'm not super happy with that but we need to do that uh, so let's see what we can do um, this is what I'm gonna do these guys go up the hill they could potentially battle but I don't think they're too interested in that and then I'm gonna see if I can do some damage on those uh, goals over there so I'm gonna ride just over that mountain and attack here with the medium heavies that's what's going to happen so we attack here first but as we know those guys have the fir um, first strike so we're gonna roll if they play it now 
and this time they roll the sword symbol. So they will actually play it now with those the Gal Gallic cavalry there. So here comes the first strike. So those guys go first and they attack with three dice. Okay, good place to play that card actually. And what a roll again. I mean, if the goals were really failing over here, they're still managing to have control over there. They're really uh, dominating over there, but here they are failing. Even though uh, we still saw, saw that uh, Conquilitanus uh, fell in the battle here, they are still fighting strong here. So that's actually three hits. We only have two blocks here, so that goes down. This is crazy. This is really crazy, because now the Gauls suddenly get another banner. So it's 7 to us, 3 there, they only need one more. So if Regulus now goes down, you know what that means. Game over. But he managed to survive. I don't know if you see that. The sun came up here, so it's really uh, bright there. Uh, so Regulus will now retreat one two and three oh let's see one two three we don't want to be in the way of these guys um well really really bad but at least as we go to the next turn now we're gonna first of all uh give the romans another card here but as you can see the romans managed to get a, a unit up there and the Gauls still only have one unit, so they actually go down with two victory banners now, since no one has control over the hill. So it's now five to three. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool, I say. Um, so, yeah. That would be the Gauls' turn then. C or order uh, lowest order count, and since that's not a, a section card over there, we need to play the C card, and that's a dark in the sky. So these guys will now play a dark in the sky, and that would mean five units, I guess. Yep. So let's see what we can do. So we cannot move first of all, and we cannot conduct any uh, close combat, of course. So these guys could actually fire, but are these guys the only ones? No, these can also fire. Let's see. These cannot, these are adjacent to an enemy. These have no target, nor, nor do these. And here we have no ranged weapons. So it's actually two units that can fire twice. Well, cool or not, I don't know. Uh, not bad. Not that cool. But let's see what happens. There might be some cool surprises here. So these guys will attack the Velites. First attack. Nothing. Second. Nothing. Then we have these lights, they will throw against that uh, medium heavy there. And that's a hit. And here comes the second attack. But nothing. But these are pretty, pretty weak now. Okay. So now we go back to the Romance. I don't know actually how you should treat this guy. I don't think it's a unit, so it will not count as one occupying the hill. I, I, I wouldn't count it like that, because that's just a leader. So I will not treat it as Roman has to control the hill now, because they have two, well, not units, but one unit and a, and a leader there. Uh, so it's still... Uh, uh, even, I would say. Uh, yeah, so here goes the Romans. A or B. Okay, medium units, or medium troops. Inspired left leadership, we could do that. Or a double time. Uh, 
Well, many interesting choices there. I mean, the mediums is cool. Um, we could attack here, we could attack here. We could start moving forward with the mediums there. We, we don't have any cavalry left though. Um, so we really don't have that many mediums. Not that many at least that can reach the enemy now. Uh, so maybe we should not play that card at, right now. So inspired left leadership. That would be uh, uh, Pappus himself and this cluster of units. So we could reach these guys and attack. We could reach some guys over here. Even uh, under us this here. Um, are we happy with that? I'm not sure. Uh, well, we could get two units to attack actually there. Maybe that's not too bad. Maybe that's not too bad. Um, that could be something. Then we have the double time. We could start rushing troops up from uh, Regulus Force. But they don't reach that many troops, that's the problem. We can only reach some lights and they can just evade. Or maybe they can't because that's the... Ah, oh, wait a minute. That's... They need to evade towards that side. So if we could place two units there and two units there, we could attack their lights and kill them. Pretty easy, actually. Ah, uh, this is interesting. We could get two banners pretty quick there. That could be worth something. Um, or I would be interested in this inspired left leadership as, as well. Uh, we could get two attacks here and we could get some attacks over here as well. Two nice choices, and you know what I used to do when I have two nice choices and roll for it. So, one to three, I will play the leadership card. Four to six, I'll go the, for a double time and start activating Regulus uh, line. That's the Regulus option. So we're gonna play uh, the double time. So it's four linked infantry units, so we'll be these guys. And this is really neat because now we can block the light infantry from evading just by going like this. Oops, that was a strike. <laughs> uh, too bad this wasn't bowling because that would have been a good result. Uh, anyway, here we go. So, uh, like that. Uh, so I think those lights are really history this turn. So let's see what we get. So no more first strike, of course. We have played that already, so let's start here. So it's four dice against that light, and they just have to stand there and fight now. They're protecting the, the rear of the other troops, focusing on assaulting the Roman line here of Papus. So let's see. First attack went really bad. <laughs> Not a single hit on those lights. Oh my, can you believe it? I mean. Even flags would have been good here. Nothing really. So the lights can actually retaliate. And they missed as well. But these guys have done their part. We still have a chance to kill those guys. Uh, let's see. The second uh, Astati or Principate unit there attacks. And now we got one hit. What is this? I mean, two units of legionaries attacking a light infantry here and only managed to get one hit. That's pretty crazy. And those guys will of course retaliate and nothing. But really, really bad. So it really gave these guys a chance to get away now. We still have one more battle to do and that's... Now we got also some Triari with us, so this should do it right. Now it's five dice suddenly, so we're gonna see. Uh, but we're not rolling good now with the Romans here, so it's only one hit. All the others are misses, so one down, 
Can you believe it? They retaliate. Happy those were not Hastati because then the lights would have got two hits. But this was Pinky Pace. No, sorry, it was Triarii, so nothing. Then we had the Legionaries. Come on. Now things start happening here. So that's one hit. And they cannot retreat, so that two hits more. So that's three hits, and these guys go down. That's more like it. So we got this for uh, victory banners over there. And I will actually go up here. Okay. Interesting. That was a double time. And let's see what the goals can do. It's a D or E. Uh, that would be... Um, no, oh, sorry, D or E up here. Counterattack, meaning a double time, or two units left, which would be over there. Uh, that's interesting because we could get some troops up the hill, get back the control, and then we need to kill one unit, then we win. Hmm. So we could really win this battle now with some luck. We need to get one unit and that would be that uh, that guy over there. Uh, the bad thing is we only have two units we can move. So the Romans need to retreat in that direction. First of all we need to block those guys so they cannot, uh, you know, evade or something. So, what I need to do... ...is to place... I want these guys on the hill, so I at least get that 3 die attack. The cavalry cannot reach any 3 die attacks in mountains... ...from whatever direction they are attacking, so... I want the cavalry on the plains here, so I'm gonna take that cavalry. So these guys move up here, and these go 1, 2, 3. Because now is the thing, if we el eliminate those guys, and when the next turn begins, we have the majority of the of the hexes here, and by that we'll get two more banners, and that will give me three banners in total, and we have a, a sum of eight, which, we, which is the goal we have here. So, let's see. These are really important roles now. So, we start with the attack of the warriors there. So that will give me three dice just because I'm attacking hill to hill. But you know what, if I roll a few flags then those guys are done because they cannot retreat now. And we did that. That was a perfect roll. So one hit, three hits and five hits. And we can only take four of course, so the, these guys go down. We can go in here and we get the banner for eliminating those Romans. So we get six now and then start the Roman turn and we're gonna check the victory condition uh, for every turn, every player turn that is. So by that we get two more banners for the golds and by that we have eight. So it's eight against four. And thus the battle ended and well, you can see this is really important, this, this hill uh, cluster here for this battle. Really, really. So, well, a few key points that happened here that um, really spelled the doom here for the Romans. First of all, their cav initial cavalry wasn't that successful and the Gauls retaliation was just too heavy, they couldn't resist and went down. Uh, so the Gauls pretty much had the control of the hills most of the battle. Um, over here, the Romans went pretty good here. I mean, 
they have pretty much not lost anything here and the goals are getting weak here so a turn or a few more if we could still have some units that could contest these, these hill hexes I think the Romans would have won because there's so many weakened troops here now we could get uh, another thing that crippled Romans really really badly is that the leaders they are we can really get them into play again after their units had died off so of course I could have chosen one now for this leader and just started riding back with that guy but to whom should we go here or I don't know there wasn't really time to activate the leaders and get them back in the battle um, so well of course the crucial part was the cavalry battle won by the Gauls uh, so they got a big edge in this battle by that um, yeah and here some minor successes that got that uh, uh, auxiliary unitary if you mem remember here on somewhere here it wasn't um, but otherwise well, a good battle. It could really easily have gone the other way as well. That's how I see it. But anyway, uh, a fun battle. This was this is another one I would really like to play actually uh, against uh, a human opponent. That would be nice because this, uh, yeah, this is actually needs. You need to think a bit differently because of the special setup with Romans on both sides. Both Romans and Gauls are crippled in how they can retreat and evade here. That was really important in this battle. Uh, even though the double time of the Romans was not that ex effective, uh, it was really crazy that the light infantry suddenly couldn't evade, you know, that was... Uh, yeah, that was something. So, yeah, by that, congratulations to Anerostus. Uh, Conclitanus, though, he fell, he will not, uh, well, he, his name will be sung in, in many songs, but uh, he cannot be, be on earth and share the loot anymore. But as this happened, uh, probably the Gauls managed to somehow rout the Romans, or actually push them back so they could continue their slow retreat towards, uh, uh, towards the north and Boiai and other uh, Gallic districts and uh, the Romans need just to wait for another day to, to hit them. Um, so, a bit different history than, than in history, <laughs> if you could say so. Alright, thank again, thanks again for watching and hope you'll be back for the next one. We still have one uh, from this war, um, well, the Gaul, Gauls and, and, and Roman battles from the uh, 220s uh, BC. So we're gonna do that next time and hope you'll be back for that. Thanks and bye for now.